and welcome to Edinburgh Napier University MBA webinar. My name is Helen Sparopoulos. I'm the admissions manager at Stafford Global. And uh, joining me this evening all the way from the UK is Dr. Kieran. Hello to you, Dr. Kieran. Hi, Helen. Thanks for having me. Okay, and I can see on my right hand side that we have quite a few of you that have joined us um, from the Middle East um, as well as in Africa. So welcome uh, everyone, it's lovely to have you with us. Uh, what we're going to do this evening is Dr. Kieran is just going to take you through the program and uh, towards the end of the presentation you will have the opportunity to type out any questions that you have for myself or for Dr. Karen. And what we are going to be doing is actually grouping these questions together because a lot of them are similar, if not identical. Um, so please do listen out for that all important uh, question and answer. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, who is a Stafford Global? Well, Stafford was established in 1993 and we are a resource center for five UK universities, one of which is Edinburgh Napier University. Now, we do offer a variety of programs, ranging from certificates to diplomas, bachelors, right through until uh, masters and doctorates. So we really do have uh, any type of qualifications for your personal and professional needs. Now, the mere fact that you're here with us this evening means that you have been in touch with one of our experienced academic consultants and our function is to assist you throughout the application process and ensure that you do get that very, very important unconditional offer. Okay, so I'm now going to hand you over to Dr. Kiran and I will join you towards the end of the presentation. Okay, so over to you. Thanks, Alan, and hello, everyone. I'm really excited to talk to you all today, hopefully to, to have you join us uh, in Edinburgh Napier with the Global Online MBA. So what I'll do today is just take you through uh, the modules and the structure of the, the Global Online MBA. I'll tell, talk a little about the assessment strategy that we use uh, within Edinburgh Napier, and of course, I'll talk a little bit, firstly, about Edinburgh Napier and Edinburgh itself. So Edinburgh has been voted the best UK city for the past three years. It's a great city to live in. I've lived here for uh, almost five years uh, and it's a, it's a really wonderful city. You can see Edinburgh Castle there on, on the main screen and it's home to, to uh, many tech startups and many financial companies um, as uh, just in second place to, to London. Um, and it's also home, you might have heard of the Edinburgh International Festival or the Edinburgh Fringe Festival uh, for anyone who likes comedians. Uh, so home to uh, very much in, in August, Edinburgh really becomes a, a theatre town and a festival town uh, with, full of tourists. Some of you might have already attended that. What that means with all these companies and with all these tourism and uh, events and things like that, what that means is that the academics that, uh, that are working with uh, Edinburgh Napier University have good consulting experience and good practical experience. For, for example, if you're taking the MBA in tourism and event management, you will have people teaching you who will, will have worked or consulted with or studied these events. So there's really first-hand experience there. So in terms of Edinburgh Napier University, we have over uh, 19,500 students from more than 130 countries. Uh, of that, more than two-thirds are studying on campus with us in Edinburgh, uh, or usually there would be uh, if it were not for the, the pandemic. Uh, but almost a third uh, 6,000 are studying at partner universities worldwide and online. So we have universities in, in uh, partner universities in Hong Kong uh, and Singapore and in China, for example. Uh, so what that means for you guys is that when you're joining the global online MBA, you're not kind of sidelined off to off to the side. Uh, you're very much part of that global cohort and. Practically and administratively, that means that we're, you're joining a well-oiled machine in terms of uh, the support that uh, that our team can give to you. So, in terms of views of Edinburgh Napier, we've been uh, lucky enough to receive uh, quite a few uh, commendations and awards in, in, in the past few years, um, and I'll briefly go through those. So we're a top five UK modern university for accounting and finance. We're top ten modern university for marketing. A top ten modern university for business. Uh, and we're the top ranked Scottish modern university. Uh, in the 2019 National Student Survey, the HRM subject group, so that's the group within the business school that teach human resource management, they received 
100% student satisfaction and we actually became number one in the UK of all institutions that offer a HRM as part of a business degree. We have five QS stars for teaching, employability and internationalization. And we're top 10 in the UK for graduate employability, uh, HR Excellence and Research Award, uh, and we have 84% student satisfaction overall. You can see at the top then in the, the complete university guide to 2020, we're number one million plus modern university for business management. So again, what do all these rankings mean? This means that we have uh, very much a, an experienced cohort of lecturers who have uh, consistently received great feedback and great student satisfaction from their students, whether that's on campus or around the world like you guys. So I'll very briefly talk about the MBA structure and some of the modules that you'll be you'll be looking at. Uh, so I'll go in depth through the uh, the MBA general uh, the general route, uh, and I'll talk about those modules uh, because that will be for most of you guys. You will have. Uh, at least four of these modules. There's also some specialis specializations that I'll talk about in a little minute as well. So the MBA general is worth 180 credits. So looking down here at the, at the bottom first, uh, you can exit at any point uh, during your MBA. Hopefully we would rather you, you'd stay with us for the, the whole MBA. Um, if you wanted to exit with an MBA, it would be awarded an MBA degree. Uh, you would have to study 180 credits. But individual modules also carry an award. If you do three of those modules and get 60 credits, you would graduate with a postgraduate certificate. Uh, if you get 120 credits, so that's all the modules minus the MBA project and research skills for managers, you would get a postgraduate diploma. So on the MBA general route, all your modules are worth 20 credits, except for the MBA project, MBA project which is worth 40 credits because that runs uh, over two trimesters. So the first module there, management and organizational change. Organizational change is, is core to every organization, especially this year of all years, really even when we're not in a pandemic. We'll have mergers, acquisitions, we'll have uh, downsizing, upscaling, new product development, all these different changes that make up an organization because change is always constant within organizations. So the, this module as, as well as all these modules are providing you the skills to become a good manager within an organization and also signaling to your boss, to your employers, that you have those skills to become a good manager if you're not one already. So management and organization change, it's about managing that change. It's about being somewhat of a leader, somewhat of a figurehead within that change uh, and looking at the, the key theoretical aspects of organizational change, but also looking at the practical aspects as well. Leading strategic decision-making then, it's somewhat of a blend module that's blending leadership and it's blending uh, strategy. So some of you might have already studied leadership or strategy before. Here we're going to put it together. So we're going to look at the strategy and embedding strategy within the organization, coming up with a good strategy or plan for the organization. Uh, but then as a leader, then how do we communicate that strategy to our, our followers? And then how do we get buy-in from our followers? How do we, uh, for example, supply the right skills and necessary <clears throat> requirements for that strategy to, to, become, uh, to become an integral part of the organization? Another blend module then is marketing and building high performance organizations, which is a bit of entrepreneurship with the building high performance organizations and obviously a bit of marketing as well. So uh, building a really, uh, a really uh, high performing organization that works well uh, in which all the team members are committed to it and then marketing it to the wider world. Global business economics and finance, pretty much what it sounds like, looking at how the global business and economic and financial environment will uh, impact upon your business. Uh, managing innovation and contemporary issues and strategy, strategic management, these are both uh, what we call the, the swap modules. So uh, the first four modules that I've shown you, those are core to all of the MBAs, uh, but managing innovation and contemporary issues and strategic management, you will only study those if you take the MBA general route. So managing innovation, like change, innovation is key for an organization's survival, and that could be innovating a product, like for example, Apple, or innovating a service, for example, Facebook. Uh, so what, whatever organization you're in, you'll have to think about innovation, and then as a manager, how do you control, how do you promote, um, and how do you assign uh, team members to an innovative product, project? Contemporary issues in strategic management is somewhat of a, of a, a kind of, a, 
a module that updates constantly, referring to the what's going on in the kind of uh, the, the environment at the, at the moment. So obviously the pandemic at the moment will be a contemporary issue in strategic management. That is one of the things that you would study. How do you, as a manager, respond strategically to things like um, your, your business being, uh, being forced to shut, for example, because of the pandemic? The research skills for managers and MBA project uh, as I said, that's what differentiates a postgraduate diploma from an MBA. So an MBA project is really an individual task, it's an individual project where you choose something that you're really interested in and that you want to study. But we know that you might not have those uh, research skills necessary to complete this project. So before you do the MBA project, uh, in your second last trimester, you'll do your research skills for manager module. Uh, and that's I actually teach on this myself. So you will learn qualitative and quantitative analysis. Qualitative analysis is where you uh, conduct, for example, interviews or focus groups with people and you qualitatively analyze the, the data, the, that, um, that spoken data that you've received. Um, quantitative analysis then is more about statistical analysis, so things like students' t-tests and, and, and correlation analysis. Uh, we also teach research ethics, so how to conduct your research ethically and uh, managing big data as well. After you've completed that module, then you're free to uh, to do an MBA project. So as I said, this is an individual project. This is where you choose something that you're really passionate about, really interested in, uh, maybe related to your work or maybe just something, some kind of interest or pastime that you're interested in. Uh, and we will assign you a supervisor who has expertise in that area. So for example, a recent, uh, recent MBA project looked at the use of influencers in uh, in, in marketing uh, beauty products. So people like Kylie Jenner uh, on Instagram marketing beauty products. Um, how does that fit into the the kind of the new marketing paradigm? And that's because that student was interested in that uh, in those products and interested in that kind of idea of, of beauty marketing. Uh, and so we we matched her up then with a supervisor who knew about online and digital marketing. So that's the way the MBA project works. Um, so you can have a think. Um, about what kind of project, what kind of topic you would be interested in doing. We always recommend that you choose something that you're really interested in because you will be spending quite a lot of time independently uh, on your own studying this and conducting research on this. So that's the MBA general route. As I said, all the MBAs, you will do the first four modules here, Management Organizational Change, LSTM, uh, MBP, HBO, and Global Business Economics and Finance. Then, depending on your specialism, you will do two other ones. If you're taking the general route, you will do managing innovation and contemporary issues in strategic management, or looking at these specialisms on the next slide, you will choose two of those. Whatever you do then, you will take research skills for managers, an MBA project, to get you up to that MBA, that 180 credits. So let's look at the specialisms. So for example, if you wanted to do the MBA in banking, instead of taking managing innovation and contemporary issues in strategic management, you would do global finance and you do financial markets, institutions and banking. Um, for example, if you wanted to do the MBA in marketing uh, specialism, you take global marketing and strategic brand management. So depending on what specialism you want to take, uh, you will take different modules, uh, uh, different modules to replace those two in blue in the last slide. Uh, it's important to note as well that if you're taking a particular specialism, your MBA project will have to be uh, geared towards that specialism. You'll have to do an MBA project um, on marketing if you wanted to do the MBA in marketing, because that's another way that you're specializing and customizing your degree. So as, we, as you can see, we have a couple of different specialisms there, depending on what environment you might work in or depending on what environment you want to move into in a management role. So <clears throat> as I mentioned at the start, we have an MBA in hospital, hospitality and tourism management. So if you're interested in holding events or event management, that will be the one for you. If you're interested in going to a HR management role, then you would take the MBA HRM. If you're working in a financial institution um, and you have that, that, that work experience in the financial institution and you want to become a manager in the future, then you could take the MBA in finance, for example. So depending on where you see yourself in, in the next five years, where you want to move uh, in your current organization and current industry or a particular industry that you want to move into, you can choose from a range of these, uh, these specialisms. Uh, and that will be, uh, you'll predetermine that uh, within with, with Stafford, within your application. So what does the global online program look like? Well, it's 100% online. 
um, as you as you should know. Uh, it's asynchronous. So asynchronous is uh, in contrast to synchronous learning. So synchronous learning is where um, you would have uh, the students and the teacher or a lecturer, an academic, um, in the classroom or on an on, online session at the same time. We don't have that. We we have an asynchronous approach when it comes to the global MBA, uh, global online MBA. So asynchronous means the lecturer will put up the materials, they will pre-record the materials, and you'll be able to access it at, at any time. So it's flexible. You can study any time, any place, at a pace that suits your personal and professional demands. So maybe you are working full time, or maybe you have uh, caring responsibilities, uh, and you want to maybe work in the evenings, or you want to study in the evenings. You can absolutely do that because all the material will be available on our virtual learning environment for you to access at any time. We've high quality materials, they're engaging, they're interactive and they're self-directed. So they're interactive in that we don't necessarily just tell you um, everything that you need to learn. We will point out things that you should go and learn yourself. Uh, you will have certain question and answers that you can answer yourself and you can interact with, with the staff in that regard. It's a truly international student experience. As you know, we will have students from across the world on this program. We have three intakes per year. The next intake obviously is in January. Then we also have May and September. So we'll talk a little bit about the January intake and the deadlines for that. But you also maybe might want to consider the May intake as well, if you're thinking about it, but you're not quite so sure yet. Looking at the assessment, so you'll be provided with formative assessment and summative assessments. Formative assessment, basically to differentiate, formative assessment is where a lecturer or an academic a tutor will give you some feedback on your on whatever you've written. Um, for example, in your project, you will get formative feedback um, where you're told maybe add a little bit here or take away a little bit here. Maybe you want, might want to focus on this. Some of the feedback then is kind of summation. It's that kind of uh, those percentages, those grades that you receive uh, in response to uh, to an essay or uh, a kind of some, whatever assessment you're doing. During the MBA Global Online, you'll have end of unit progress tests. So you'll have 10 academic units with online questions at the end of each unit. Uh, and this is going to test your knowledge and your understanding of the key concepts within each of those units. And that counts as 10% of your final module mark. Then you'll have an end of module assessment and that's worth 90% of the module mark. And that differs according to what, what the assessment, or sorry, what the module is. The assessment could be an essay, the assessment could be some kind of, um, um, kind of a report, something like that. It's suited towards whatever material or topics that you're covering within the module. Assessments will be undertaken online and they'll be described as in the approved module descriptor. So when you're looking this up, you can go onto the Edinburgh Napier MBA website and you can look at the different MBA options and they will have all those different modules that I've just shown you on there. And you can just uh, search for those on a, on a search engine and that will give you the module descriptor and that will tell you everything you need to know in terms of the learning outcomes, but also importantly, the assessments that you'll be required to take within those modules. Uh, so as part of the quality assurance process, module leaders will sample a number of summative assessments and portfolios as a check that the work submitted undertaking is that of the matriculated student, just to ensure that there's no plagiarism or anything like that going on. And so you're required, uh, let me just see here. You're advised that if you have any question, if there is any question, uh, I just want to get this right, uh, regarding the authorship of your submitted assessment, that ENU has the right to require you to undertake an online via. So if we think that maybe there has been some plagiarism involved, then we will ask you maybe to take an online viva. Um, a viva, a, a viva voce, um, some of you might know, is an oral exam. So you'll have a discussion with the lecturer on the module regarding uh, the material, regarding the learning outcomes to ensure that you've met those learning outcomes. So that's the assessment strategy. As you'll see, it's all online and it's all uh, kind of in your own time, but you will have some deadlines when it comes to the end of the module assessments. In terms of the trimester and the module outline, so we work on a trimester basis rather than a semester basis. We have three trimesters every year. So trimester one for anyone who's starting in January or thinking about starting in January, trimester one runs from January to April. You will have module one, module two, uh, and that'll be one of those, those four uh, core modules that I've talked about already. Trimester two then, you'll take module three and module four, so you'll already have uh, 80 credits done. Trimester three from September to December, uh, that'll be September 2021 to December uh, 2021, this stage, uh, that's module five, module six. 
Then for trimester four, that January to April, you'll take one module that's research skills for managers to prepare you if you're able to take a research project um, on board. And then trimester five, you will do a dissertation project that's very much in your own time. It's your own independent study. You're, you're conducting research on your own uh, worth 40 credits, so a big module there. Uh, but as we said, you will be assigned a supervisor within that trimester who will be able to talk to you about your, uh, your dissertation uh, project and we'll be able to give you tips and feedback um, on 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 your on the research that you're conducting. In terms of the weeks then, so week one you have access to all the module materials on the virtual learning environment. We use a virtual learning environment called Moodle. Some of you might have experience with that already. Uh, you'll have online induction and you'll start you'll start your studies. Weeks two to 12, you will have the module study, again, in your own time and at a pace that is appropriate for your own particular personal and professional um, uh, schedule. And then week, week 13, then you'll have the submission of your final assignment. That's when the deadline is for that final assignment. As I said, what that final assignment consists of depends on the particular module. Lastly, then, in terms of entry requirements and fees. So if you want to enter the MBA online, whatever the specialism is, we require you to have an honours degree at 2.2 or above, so that's a 2.2, 2.1 or a first, uh, plus two years relevant work experience. So that work experience should be relevant to whatever uh, specialism that, you're, that you're, you want to go towards. Comparable alternative qualifications or professional qualifications and relevant work experience may also be considered. You might also be considered for exemptions depending on previous qualifications that you have. You might be exempt from some modules. Selection of suitable candidates is at the discretion of the head of the MBA programs. An alternative to the MBA, if you don't have those two years work experience, then you could have an alternative to the MBA, which is the MSc, and uh, the Masters in Science of Business Management, and that starts in September and January. So different kind of setup in terms of, of, of the structure there, but it is an alternative. There are some common modules to the MSc Business Management and the MBA, uh, but it is very much a separate degree. If your first language isn't English, you need to provide evidence that you're demonstrating that you can conduct yourself in English. For example, if you've done a previous degree in English, that'll prove that you're able to, to conduct yourself in English uh, or the results of an English language test. And for more information on those, you can contact your Stafford Global Personal Consultant. The application deadline for the MBA for the January starts is the 14th of December 2020. So not a lot of time to, to go, but your Stafford Global Personal Consultant will be able to help you with that. At the fees then, you can also talk to Stafford about that because it depends on, on your particular situation. So if you have any questions, obviously myself and Helen are going to take some questions now, but uh, the ENU Global Online Support Team will be helping you throughout the MBA with any questions that you might have as a student. They will also be able to give you some ask, answer some of your questions that you might have before you apply or during your application. Um, and obviously we'll take some questions now and thanks for listening. Excellent. Thank you so much. It was very, very informative. And uh, in the meantime, I've actually looked at quite a lot of questions that have come through. Um, a question from uh, for Luke, and I, I hope I've pronounced that correctly. Um, what is the 90% end of module assessment? Is this in the form of an exam or an essay? So it's not an exam, it'll be uh, in a, some kind of an essay or report kind of format is usually the most common. Again, it depends on that. I don't want to say too much because it depends on the exact uh, module that you have. For example, if you're doing leading strategic decision making, you might have something like an essay. Um, but if you're doing maybe a financial module, uh, where you're talking about financial reporting um, or some kind of analysis, financial analysis, then it might be slightly different. So it's going to depend on the particular type of um, module that you're undertaking uh, because different kind of assessment strategies work differently for, for those different modules. So usually it will be in the form of an essay or report, but there will be some kind of alternatives with that. Uh, there won't be any exams. Super. And uh, this is um, a, a two-part question with regards to um, the number of hours that one should spend per week. Um, how many hours should we spend per week if we're doing one module or if we're doing two modules? And in your opinion, what is better to do one module for two modules uh, per trimester? Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, it's entirely flexible. So, I mean, in my opinion, it's it's really up to you and your own personal circumstances how many modules you cover for, for 
per, uh, per trimester. I mean, two, two, two is a kind of really the maximum that we'd recommend, um, unless you're not in, say, full-time work. Um, if, for example, though, you're, you are in full-time work and you have caring responsibilities, then maybe one module per trimester might be the best approach there. It's really kind of, a, you have to have a, a discussion with yourself and maybe uh, those of you you're caring for about what you can afford, uh, how much time you can afford to spend. In terms of the amount of time that you take, um, I would usually say at least uh, 10 to 12 hours a week. Um, but then that is what I would do if I were doing the MBA. Um, you might, and that is going to fluctuate throughout the trimester because in some, for example, towards the end of the trimester, you will be thinking more about your assessment and, and that 90% um, end of module assessment. Uh, so that will take up more time. So, but again, it is flexible. It's up to you and it's up to your own kind of pace of learning. Um, that's what I would take, but others might be uh, somewhat quicker in achieving those learning outcomes. Some might need a bit, a bit longer. Uh, amount of time with that regard. As I said, it's very flexible and it's very much tailor-made to your own particular circumstances. So uh, it's not a great answer, but I suppose that's, that's the most correct answer for right now. Perfect. And um, another question from Faluke is regarding the exemptions. Uh, do you accept exemptions from other institutions? Um, yeah. And how many, what would be the maximum number of credits provided? Uh, I think we've never reached a maximum because I think if you're if you're uh, if you've already done, done an MBA, for example, you wouldn't be studying with us. Um, there's a we really don't have much of a maximum um, that we've we've encountered before. We certainly don't, haven't put a number on it. Uh, as as you can see, we do offer obviously exemptions. Um, for example, a common exemption is for somebody who might have studied uh, a leadership certificate or a leader a diploma in strategic leadership. So right away. And this happened to me last week, actually. I had a student, a potential student, who had studied a certificate in strategic leadership. And right away, I knew that, well, they wouldn't have to study the leading strategic decision-making module because they've already met those learning outcomes. So we take it on a case-by-case -case basis. It's very much, again, flexible and up to the particular uh, applicant. Um, but we do offer exemptions. Uh, and there's no real maximum uh, exemption, credit exemptions that we, that we offer. Right, correct. And I'd like to also add that do get in touch with your academic consultant in Stafford if you are going to um, apply for exemptions. It's imperative that you do try and submit some learning outcomes of the modules that you have completed because it does make um, Dr. Karen's work a lot easier to try and map uh, what you have completed against the modules from uh, the MBA at the university. So do get in touch with us and we'll be able to guide you as to what documentation needs to be submitted. Okay, and in the general um, MBA, um, for the dissertation, can I choose any topic or is there a specific topic that I would need to look at? Yeah, absolutely. If it was a general MBA, then you're really quite open to what topic you want to look at. Uh, when we say, for example, with a specialist MBA, you have to choose um, a topic regarding that's somewhat related to that specialism. Even within that, there's a huge variety that you can you can undertake. For example, HRM, it's what, what I teach. You could do, uh, if you're doing an MBA with HRM, you could take um, a top, you could look at your dissertation, could look at leadership, it could look at uh, performance management, talent management, diversity and inclusion. There is a huge amount of scope within those specialisms. And then, as you say, within the general MBA, that is opened even further. You can choose whatever it is that you're interested in, as long as it has some kind of management or business kind of uh, uh, aspect to it. Right. Um, and I have seen a few questions with regards to payments, um, and I'll just answer that. Um, in terms of the fees, please do get in touch with your academic consultant. Um, we do have a very, very flexible payment uh, method, uh, lovely monthly very flexible monthly payment instalment. Um, so please do get in touch with us and we'll be able to guide you regarding that. Okay, and uh, is ENU part of the European credit transfer and accumulation system? Yes, I believe it is. Um, I will have to check on that. But the ECGS, as it's known, uh, I do believe uh, I have seen reference to that. So I do believe we are, yeah. 
Okay, good. And um, can you advise if this program will get me into a DBA or a PhD? Mm -hmm. um, certainly, I think it would definitely it would definitely help your chances. I think that you're showing. Uh, I mean, I have some DBA students, and what we really want to see when you're applying for a DBA or a PhD in business, we want to we want to see that you have um, you have a good kind of critical dis uh, awareness. Um, you're able to analyze materials and form a critical opinion very well. And so the MBA does give you that chance to do that, particularly the MBA research project. If you did well in the MBA research project, well, that's what a DBA and a PhD is. It's about undertaking a huge research project of your, of your own. So if you're able to show within that research project that you did really well, you got a first class or Q1, for example, uh, in the research project, that will signal to potential uh, potential supervisors who are maybe looking for DBA PhD students or to the university that you're capable of undertaking that research project and being able to demonstrate critical and analytical skills, which is the most important thing. So definitely, I'd say it's not a, a um, what you would call a direct route, where if you de if you have an MBA, you definitely get into a DBA or PhD, but it is certainly um, a very, very good chance um, to demonstrate that you're capable of doing a, a DBA or a PhD. That's correct. Okay. And is this program globally recognized and accredited? Mm -hmm. So with regards to accreditation, we are in the middle, uh, ENU as a as a, as a ENU Business School as, a, as an institution, are in the middle of the AACSB AA accreditation, to make sure I get it right. Um, so we are currently being accredited. We're under the process of accreditation. Uh, so once that uh, is, is complete, we will be accredited with the AACSB. AA uh, but as I said, we're currently in that process. So um, it is globally recognized and MBA is globally recognized qualification in, in general. In terms of accreditation, we are in the, in the middle of that process to get that accreditation. Uh, we should hopefully uh, hear back about that um, sometime in, in uh, next year. Excellent. And um, can I do two specializations at the same time? As you have said, there are a lot of common modules throughout the specializations. So mm -hmm. would it be easy just to take up two special, uh, specializations? So we don't offer two specialisms because obviously the, the, the kind of very, very definition of specialism is that you're very much specializing in a particular area. So you will have those four core modules that you will study no matter what specialism it is. But with those two specialism modules and with that project, that is where you're specializing. And it's only two modules in the project. So it's not a lot of modules. So if you were to split that between two, then you wouldn't really be specializing in a particular area. So we don't offer a, a dual specialism with that regard. Right. And John's question is, um, if I decide to leave the program halfway through my studies, um, how many years do I have in order to come back and complete the MBA? Mm -hmm. Well, my approach to this is always, if you've passed a module, you've passed it in per perpetuity. So you, you've passed it kind of forever. So if you've already passed certain modules, you have that, um, you've demonstrated the knowledge and you, you've uh, achieved um, a pass in those modules, then um, I have no limits in terms of when you could come back and rejoin the program. We have had students who have rejoined the program uh, recently because they've had to take time off for personal circumstances or financial circumstances, uh, and we don't really look at the time frame in which they've, they've passed those modules. Okay, good. And um, Mohammed's question is regarding the English requirement. Um, so please do get in touch with your Stafford consultant and we'll be able to guide you um, as to the various English um, methods that can be used to actually meet that requirement. Okay, what is the pass rate of this MBA program? Very interesting question. We do get that quite often. Mm -hmm. So the pass rate, because we offer a lot of formative and, and summative, uh, uh, summative assessment um, and formative feedback that can, uh, that can help to guide you along the way, we have a pretty good pass rate. It does fluctuate, obviously, with uh, across a couple of years. Uh, it is somewhat in the 80 and the, the high 80s and the low 90 percent, I think, uh, from the last reports that I've looked at. So um, it is a very good pass rate. Um, and it, it kind of uh, it uh, shows that the formative feedback does help those students um, with with their their pass rates per module. Then there's going to be a different fluctuations, but usually in the high 80s and the low 90 percent, I would say. 
Okay. And uh, with regards to application documents, I'm just going to briefly um, just give you an idea of what we are looking at so that we can submit it to the university, because I do see about two or three questions related to that. Um, very important, and Dr. Kieran will agree with me, is your CV. Your CV has to be extremely detailed. We need to see all your working experience, specifically supervisory management experience. Um, make sure that there are the dates of your tenure, your um, company name, as well as your title. So that's very important for the admissions department to look at. Um, the other document that is important is also a personal statement. Um, and again, your Stafford consultant will be able to guide you as to how to structure that personal statement and um, uh, what the university is actually looking for. Um, and then generically, very important to see if you have got degree certificates and, and your transcripts. Uh, that's also important for the university to look at. And general documents like a copy of your passport or national ID. So do get in touch with us and we'll be able to provide you with a full list of uh, the documents that are required to be submitted. Okay. Right, and uh, for Luke has come back and said that um, they're a little bit nervous about that final 90% assessment that you were talking about. And why is it formulated in that way that there's a 90% assessment? Mm -hmm. So really it's about flexibility and it's about being able to, to give students um, on the MBA program the, the most flexibility that they have. So the 10%, um, as we said, is that those end of unit tests that you can do at any time. That 90% assessment, um, it's so it's it's a clear structure and you're able to, to really uh, plan around it and do your own schedule, to schedule your own work around that. Um, you can submit it earlier than that, 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 that week 13, uh, but having that one assessment, although it is quite a big assessment, <clears throat> having that one assessment is able to, it, it simplifies things basically because a lot of students, um, if you're a full-time student, uh, for example, on undergrad full-time students, you would have a lot of deadlines throughout the trimester. You might have to finish a report one time and a presentation the next week or something like that. That isn't as um, as convenient for, for uh, MBA students because they might be in full-time work as well. So although it is a big assessment, it is very simplified. You know that uh, with this module, this is the particular assessment that you'll have to do. And there's no need to be nervous about it because our staff and our, our academics will be able to provide you with the administrative um, aspects of it or the kind of the formative feedback with, with regards to that. So if you have any questions about the assessment, if you're worried about it or nervous about it during the module, you can absolutely email the, the lecturer and they'll get back to you with some advice about that. Uh, they have looked at these assessments for many years, so they'll be able to provide you with really detailed advice with regards to that. So it is about simplifying your own kind of um, workflow and your own schedule work, uh, and you will have that support and those resources available to you from the academics, from the global online support team, and from the library that will be able to provide you with as good a, a chance as possible to, to get a pass in that assignment. Right, good. And... Uh... Um, is the university flexible in uh, the submission of assignments? So we are quite flexible to a degree. So if you um, you will know the, the the deadline for the assignments well in advance um, throughout the, the trimester. Uh, obviously, though, with for example with COVID and with other circumstances that might arise as a result of COVID, COVID, we've been quite flexible in the past year with regards to the, those deadlines. Um, <clears throat> We are very flexible when it comes to any extenuating circumstances, what we call extenuating cir circumstances like illness or like maybe, um, uh, for example, if you have had a bereavement um, or maybe a family member has been unfortunately been suffering from, from an illness and you, your caring responsibilities have, um, have increased as a result, uh, we are quite flexible when it comes to that. We would just ask that you kind of um, provide the module leader, so the person who's in charge of the particular module um, with as early notice as possible. Um, if it's, for example, because of your own illness, you might provide a doctor's note with regard to that. Uh, and we are very flexible with um, the module leader can can give you up to 10 working days. So that's in reality two weeks um, extra onto that uh, that deadline. Uh, and if you need any more than that, we would um, absolutely consider it uh, regarding your circumstances. So as flexible as possible, yes. Good. And um, is the graduation live um, virtually 
uh, because of COVID or is there a possibility of uh, actually attending any of these graduations on the campus? Mm -hmm. So at the moment, as you say, they are, they are virtual. We are hoping to have our graduation, in-person graduations, uh, starting in uh, in November 2021. So that's next November. Hopefully, uh, can, uh, we have to see how, the, how well the vaccine works out and how well the, the COVID rates fall. Um, that is the plan for now. Uh, and you will absolutely be invited to, to graduate in person. So uh, this picture that I have up here is in the Usher Hall in the middle of Edinburgh. So this huge, beautiful building in, in Edinburgh. And this is where the graduations are. This is a recent graduation. Um, so you'll absolutely be invited to graduate in person if you want, uh, or you can graduate in, in absentia. So where you um, where you uh, are graduated, to, uh, although you're not there, you will receive your certificate uh, in the mail. Okay, and uh, due to COVID, um, I can understand that there may not be any full-time uh, program on campus. So my question is, can I start this program online and then transfer and continue my studies on the campus? So unfortunately, the answer is no for that one, because uh, the Global Online MBA and uh, the in-person MBA are quite different programs, although there's obviously a bit of overlap with regards to the material, the structure and the way that they're delivered are quite different. So in the in-person MBA, for example, your assessment structure will be different. So it will be quite hard for you to, to move from online to, to in-person MBA. So we don't actually allow transfers from, from the online to the in-person one. Okay, and uh, will my degree state online distance learning um, and will this also be mentioned in my transcript? Uh, no and no. So we don't mention that on, on the, the certificate and uh, it wouldn't be mentioned on the transcript. Okay, um, and uh, with regards to the tutors, how do they actually tutor me on the platform um, and are they available via phone or email? Mm -hmm. So they're definitely uh, available via email. We also offer within the, the virtual learning environment, within Moodle itself, there will be an online uh, discussion forum where you can discuss with other students or with the, the, the global online tutors. Global online tutors have um, in-person sessions where you can have um, kind of uh, you can talk to them face to face, as it were, over over the the virtual learning uh, platform. Um, so you will have continual communication with those global online tutors, um, as well as kind of the written feedback and the formative feedback that they'll give you as well. So there will be chances uh, you are not just kind of on your own. You will you will be able to to talk to those global online tutors uh, through a variety of methods, through email, through that online session, and through those uh, those discussion forums as well. Okay, um, and to my uh, yes, um, your question is, is this a purely online distance learning MBA? And the question is, yes, it is completely online. Um, and you're quite correct, you, you do not have the time to travel and attend any full-time classes. So this type of MBA would be ideal for you. Uh, please do get in touch with me or with your academic consultant and um, I'll be able to, to give you more details on that. Okay, and um, if I do fail an assignment, um, do I get a chance to redo another submission? Yeah, absolutely. So you will be able to uh, uh, resubmit once, I think, um, and then, sorry, you will have two resubmission attempts, I believe, um, but you will definitely be able to resubmit the assignment um, and you will be given, it. that will be treated uh, just as if, it's, uh, as if it's a first submission. You won't be penalized because it's a resubmission. Okay, I do understand that I can try and complete this program in 21 months. Uh, my question is, can I pick up more modules than the standard two, um, as I've been told, so that I can complete it in less than 21 months? In general, that would be a case-by-case -case basis, uh, and that would be you would have to provide some justification and some, uh, so uh, maybe a, a personal statement to show that you were able to do that. In general, we wouldn't allow that. It would be really very much in the exceptional circumstances that you could do that. Um, uh, we would recommend that the two modules per trimester is kind of the most one can do to, to really be able to complete the, the program successfully. But again, it is up to personal circumstances, and we could look at perhaps making an exemption. 
Good, and um, I am going to be doing this online distance learning. I'm looking forward uh, to actually joining the program. Uh, thank you, uh, Mahmoud, that's excellent. Uh, my question is, is there any assistance from the university to help me in securing a job in the UK once I have completed this program? So we have a team called the Student Futures team who will be able to give you assistance in, in for example, um, preparing your CV and preparing for interviews, things like that, things to do with that job market search. And as a global online, uh, global online student, you'll have access to the Student Futures team. So uh, the, the MBA team itself, uh, we wouldn't be offering you the, that advice because there is a dedicated team that offers that advice as well. So absolutely, we will have... Um, uh, generic uh, job market advice available to you. Okay, and uh, will the lectures or any lectures that you may provide, will they be live or can they be recorded for us to review? So the lectures are all 100% uh, asynchronous, so that's that, that they, they are they are pre-recorded. So um, and I've done it many times myself. Yeah, the lecture will pre-record the lecture, uh, and there won't be any students in, in you know, for example, their office or anything like that. Uh, and that'll be available. That'll be pre-recorded on a on a uh, platform called Panopto, um, which will provide you with uh, not only the lecture but links to the different lecture slides and, for example, subtitles for those who, who, who require them. Uh, and you will have access to that at any time um, and you can access it at any place and you can watch them over and over again um, as many times as you want. Okay, will I have access to any other university resources as I am a online distance learning student? Mm -hmm. So you'll have access to the library um, and, and other resources within the university. The library probably the most important one because during your uh, MBA dissertation, for example, and really any assessment that you'll do, but for, for definitely during your MBA dissertation project, you will have to access uh, online e-journals, so uh, academic journals that are online. You can get access to them with your Napier login uh, through the, the library. Uh, the library also has subject librarians, so we have a, a subject librarian called Keith Walker who will be able to to provide you with materials related to business and management for example if you couldn't find something um, an academic article or a textbook that you that you really wanted that's relevant to your particular assignment to your dissertation he will help you to access that as well so we definitely have um, a lot of uh, kind of a support outside of just the MBA teaching team we'll have that you will have access to those uh, resources within the university as well Okay, and I do not have a degree at the moment, but I do have many, many years of experience in the Middle East, um, in the hotel industry. I have been a manager of hotels um, for literally the past 15 years. Can I do this degree um, without having a bachelor? So normally we require you to have the bachelors with a 2-2 or above. But as, as, as we said, there are going to be exceptional circumstances. So if you do have a lot of work experience, we can absolutely consider that for your application as well. It is by no means uh, that you will you you won't get in because you don't have that that degree. If you have all that experience, then we would definitely count that as uh, as recognised prior learning. Uh, and your staff or consultant will be able to help you with crafting that personal statement to show how you've met some of those learning outcomes. Absolutely, absolutely. So do get in touch with your experienced academic consultant and we'll be able to advise you as to what documents you would require to submit, especially if you're going to apply on what we call a non-standard entry and that is based on your extensive work experience. Okay, um, and one last question from Faluke is, will this MBA be accepted in America, would you know? Uh, I believe it would be, um, the accreditation will certainly help when we have that accreditation. Um, but an MBA is kind of a globally recognized uh, qualification in general. And obviously UK education providers are very well recognized across the world as well. So, I mean, it would depend, I, I would imagine, on, on the particular organization, but certainly having that MBA, um, I would imagine it would be uh, uh, seen as, uh, it would be recognized in a way. Um, but I, I suppose it depends on the organization, depends on, on who you're, you're looking for. But an MBA is an MBA um, and it's from a, from a very high quality organization and institution. So we'd certainly see no reason why it wouldn't be recognized. 
correct. Excellent. Okay. So I've managed to group all the questions together. Thank you very much, everyone, for joining us this evening. I'm just going to close off by saying that we are currently accepting application for January of 2021. The program will commence on the 18th of January. It's just around the corner. Application deadline is uh, coming up very soon. We have one application deadline coming up now next week, which is on the 14th. And uh, the university will accept late applications in the first part of January. But because this is a very, very, very popular program um, uh, and it does book up quite quickly, I do strongly advise that you send your application documents to us by next week so that we can get this through to the university so that they can review it and get that very important unconditional offer. Okay, thank you very much everyone for joining us. Again, Dr. Kieran, lovely seeing you. Thank you so much and uh, have a very good evening. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.